Hello everyone. Hello everyone, trust if you're working on. Um, just a quick vlog. Just we I've been thinking another van vlog the other day. Are we already dead? Not like not much to think about these guys, right? Called the Knack Mac Fiegel. And it's on Terry Pratchett. These guys, do we three men? Okay. Just some artwork of them. So, like, it's for kids and that, but it's not, you know what I mean, it's, it fucking works on so many levels, as, as you'll see in a minute, right? I'm trying to concentrate on that, well, thank you, Lee, this computer is brilliant, I'm just getting used to it now. So that it took me a while, it was a nightmare getting a screen recorder. So I've got one on top for 30 days, so I better be quicker. Huh. Right, there's the man himself, Teddy Pratchett, anyway. In his disc flat world, this guy knew so much. He worked for years as a PR guy in um, a power station, a neutral power station, and he said he'd write a book about his experiences, but no one would believe it. So, you know, right, so we come up with these characters, the Weasley Men, or the Discworld series. I'm sure everyone who watched in this must be familiar at least with some of it. But what's interesting to me about the Mac, Mac Beagles, well, one of the interesting things about them, right, oh, I've got my wash on, it's not a good time, is it? Right, the Mac, Mac Beagles, sometimes known as Pitskies, Weasley Men, and the Little Men. But a type of fairy folk that appear in Terry Pratchett's Discworld novels, Court Juglum, The Wee Free Men, A Hatful Sky, Winter Smith, I Shall Wear Midnight, Snuff, and The Shepherd's Crown. Aside from being six inches tall, they just about invert the Victorian concept of mystical and refined fairies and hark back to the fairies of Fordlow, who were generally seen as occasionally helpful thieves and pests. The Knack Mac Feagle's skin appears blue. Because it is heavily tattooed and covered with wood and all have red hair, the tattoos identify a Feagle's clan. Wings or similar features of any kind are out of the question. Their speech can only be described as some sort of variation of a Scots language, usually Glaswegian in the clouds encountered so far, although William the Gonagall, from a different clan, has a softer Highland accent. They are notably strong and resilient, which comes in handy given that almost all Male feagles tend to be notoriously rowdy as a lifestyle. The feagles spend their time drinking, fighting and stealing alone or in various combinations. Right, you get the idea, right? But this, see what I mean about it's not for children me or only like that. Some clans have an apparently superstitious fear of their names being written lest they appear on unwelcome legal documents. Some of the upland clans have mastered the concept of a law as a weapon. However, a note that is as a good idea, never to sign a feagle contract. Six inch high people write very small print. Beware the cry, we've got a cheap lawyer and we're not afraid to use him. The feagle swords glow blue in the presence of lawyers. Right? So, it, it's brilliant. It's amazingly entertaining, but fucking there's a lot of underlying stuff going on. Look, among the warriors, each clan is a Gonagall, a bard or a war poet, whose job is to create terrible poetry that is recited during battles to demoralise the enemy. See William McGonagall. A well-trained Gonagall can even make the enemy's ears explode and is equipped with mouse pipes. Bagpipes made from mouse skin, often with the ears still attached. Look, they've got bagpipes what make the ears explode. In a hat full of sky, the Gonagall, awfully wee Billy Big Chin, can play the mouse pipe so sadly that it will start to rain outside. A Gonagall tends to be somewhat more intelligent and level-headed than most other male feagles, and often acts as an advisor to the big man. 
Some of them travel from clan to clan, making sure the old songs and stories are still remembered and sharing the new ones. Culture and beliefs. Despite their criminal tendencies, the Nat McFeagal do possess a sense of honour. They see no sport in fighting the weak. They may take one cow from a man with a herd of 50. However, they will not steal an old woman's only pig or an old man's only pair of false teeth. <laughs> that, don't, you know. They claim it was a difference of opinion over when to stop stealing that led to their exile by the Queen of Fairies. As a rule, the Nat McFeagal will never steal from a truly poor. The Nat McFeagal clans have appeared in books in the Long Chalk, sorry, the Long Lake clan, who settled in Lankra in Coipe Juglum, but were not named until A Hat Full of Sky, and the Chalk Hill clan, who feature in Tiffany Aching books. The Chalk Hill clan had, until the arrival of their new Kelder, Gina, from Long Lake, a superstition that anything written down could be used against you in a court of law and each of them carried swords that glowed blue in the presence of lawyers. The Long Lake clan have similar superstitions about writing and lawyers, but believe it's possible to beat them at their own game, and are famed for their very complicated documents. Nat McFeagle clans tend to occupy the ancient burial man. They've got a toad who's a lawyer in one of the books. A lawyer who got turned into a toad, I think, by a witch at some point, and... Um, He's joined their clan and he gives them legal advice on that. It's great, <laughs> unreal. Anyway, I'm getting, I'm going off the sidetrack. What I'm going for is that when Lee was saying, are we already dead? Look, the fearlessness of Nat McFeagle warriors in combat is derived from their religious belief that they cannot be killed because they are already dead. They believe that they are in the afterlife and that any Feagle who is killed has simply been reincarnated into the world where they have already lived before. The reason that this world, with the sunshine, flowers, birds, trees, things to steal, people to fight, must be some sort of heaven, because a world that couldn't be open to just anybody, that good a world couldn't be open to just anybody, they consider it a kind of Valhalla, where brave warriors go when they are dead. So their reason... They have already been alive somewhere else and then died and were allowed to come to the disc world because they've been so good. <laughs> eh? Mental, eh? Even dogs are green. You should ask the dogs. Despite carrying swords that are nearly as large as themselves, which is not outlandish given the already documented history of Mike Fingal feats of strength, their preferred weapons are the boot and the head. This results in more Spiegel's noses being broken. That I'm telling you, it's immensely entertaining, but I just thought I'd bring that up with me to bog it with it. You used to knock it off! I just thought I'd um, show you that. Eh? If you can, if you're ever stuck for something to read or watch, or you can get them. Well, these are, this is all the annotations out of the books of my. You know what? Um, just they've got their own sort of language and that. Grim hounds. There are various hellhound, devil dog legends in Britain. Specifically, the grim part of the name and the reference to them haunting graveyards suggests the Kerr Grim, which hangs around churchyards to protect the dead, buried there from evil spirits or the devil. Nat Mac Feagle battle cries. They can take our lives, but they can't take our traitors. This is, they can take our lives, but they will never take our freedom from a movie brave heart. Bang went saxpence is one of those punchlines everyone's forgotten the joke. To, reflecting the alleged meanness of the Scots. He derives from a punch cartoon in which a Scotsman complains about the expense of London. Mun, I had a been a year about two hours when a bang went saxpence. I'd only been here two hours when a bang went saxpence. Anyway, look, see, he's got their own fan clubs and everything, it's massive. Me three men. I just thought I'd show you that anyway, just we read vlog the other day. I thought I'd try and lighten it up a bit because it was a really powerful vlog that the other day, Lee. 
He really was. Powerful dog, mate. Hey, I was going to say all sorts of other things, but I'll just leave it for now, hey, cause it's, I'm just getting used to this new technology, eh? and this new operating system, eh? Oh, before I had the background where it all um, goes back, 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 you know what I mean? What I'm talking about. Hey, keep your eye I hope this turns out, so.